What's going on everyone, I'm back with another installation video. Today I'm going to show you how to install Extreme Raid's Clicky Hair Trigger Kit. At the end I'm going to explain and demonstrate how it works. If you guys shop in the GamingCobra.com website, you'll be able to get a 10% discount by clicking on my referral link or you can use the code I'm a caveman. Now let's unbox the Hair Trigger Kit. You got a warranty card, Clicky Hair Trigger Kit, tools and screws, and these are the parts you're going to install under your buttons for a quicker trigger response. To start your controller disassembly, grab a prying tool. You're gonna take out the trim on your controller. To do that, use your prying tool to dig into one of the ends right here. And then you can push up. You do the same to the other end. Then you're gonna move on to the middle around here and just do the same thing. When that's done, you can actually just grab one end, push upwards, and the whole thing should come out. To take off your L1 and R1 buttons, you're gonna dig in under the button. You can either do it on the middle, or you can also do it from the sides. And I usually like to put my thumb on top of it so it doesn't fly off somewhere. There's two locks under your controller. You can just go under it, then push outwards and you do that to the other side. You're gonna have four screws to take out. To remove your back shell on one of the sides, dig in with your prying tool and you're just gonna keep going back and forth all the way up. You have locks right around this area so you'll know when you opened up that side then you can move on to the other side and do the same thing if you had already pushed these locks outwards then it'll make it easier for the back shell to come off grab onto one end of the back shell then just slowly pull up and it should come off now we're gonna move the battery to the side some of you guys might have double-sided tape on it there's a little cable right here and i'm actually just going to move that out of the way If this little piece comes off, you can always put it later on when you're assembling the controller. You have one screw to remove right here. Now you can remove the battery holder. To remove the battery, you're going to grab onto these edges right here. And you can actually just wiggle left to right while you're pulling up. Now you're going to disconnect four cables. One is right here. Another one here. one on the left side and the tiny one right here you can always choose to remove this one but if i already removed it from the battery holder i usually don't disconnect this one at all also i personally like to strain this cable out to make it easier to take out the board and put back in to move the motherboard out of the way you have two tiny locks one on the left side here you can actually just push that outwards Put your finger here while you're pushing up and another one is hiding right here behind the battery connector push that one outwards as well then you can push your motherboard up now you can carefully just flip it towards you just pay attention to your, your cables and that should be fine if this piece comes out of your controller just remember this is how it's placed but it's always good to just remove it and keep it safe somewhere. There is two silver screws you need to remove. There's two black screws, one on the left side and one on the right side. Once that's done, you'll be able to just grab onto these two ends right here. Then pull it towards you. And the whole internal casing is off. Now I'm going to flip the motherboard over again. After that, flip the whole casing over. To remove both haptic triggers, you can see there's two screws on both sides. So you have a total of four screws to remove. I removed both triggers and this is what they look like. I'm 
I'm going to start by disassembling the L2 trigger first. R2 is disassembled in the same way. To start out, I'm going to use my tweezers to take this wire out. You're going to see that there is a tiny gap right here and it's actually enough for one side of the tweezers to go in. One side is going to go under and if your tweezers are pointy, just be careful. Once you see that side is under it, you can grip onto the wire. And you can just wiggle and pull out. I know that wire came off easily, but sometimes a little wiggle does help. That's why I recommend doing a little wiggle. Now you're going to turn it over. You're going to see three screws. You can just remove all of those. There's a forced screw under that wire that you removed at the start. Now that all screws are removed, this little black piece right here is going to come off. This one is going to come off as well. And this black wheel, I recommend removing it just in case you end up having to flip the trigger. This metal rod is holding down the L2 trigger button, so we just gotta remove that one. When the rod is removed, you can push down on your button and then pull outward. And then pay attention to this. If it ever comes off, this is how it's placed. You're going to need two each of these pieces. So just take those out and have them ready. I already accidentally bent one off right here. This tiny piece that looks like an L shape is gonna be inserted on your L2 trigger button. There are two holes right there. Hopefully you can see that. And you see these two tiny ends. You're going to insert it exactly like this. Going into those holes of the trigger right here. Once it's in, just give it a little push to make sure it's in there tightly. And this is what it should look like. The circular piece that looks like this is going to go under your L1 and R1 buttons. I didn't realize I wasn't recording, but luckily I still have this one that I could put it on. But just so you can see how it's supposed to look, here you go. That hole is going to be covered. Just grab your little round piece, you're going to insert it in that hole right there. And for this one, you actually do have to push pretty hard on it so that it goes fully inside. Now I'm going to take out the trigger kit. Here's a closer look and you can see how they're labeled R1, L1, L2, R2. Both of these are going to be installed the same way for either the left side triggers or right side triggers. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. You're going to remove the clear silicone pad that's right here. And now you can also remove this wire to put your clicky hair trigger, make sure that the L1 R1 button is on this side and the L2 R2 on this side. So that easily goes in. Just give it a nice little tap. And it needs to be placed down like that. To put your trigger back in, you're going to start out with this end, making sure that this goes inside of it. Then you can start to bring it up. Make sure that your spring right here is inside the trigger. Once that's done, just hold it down and turn it around. That rod that you removed earlier, you're just going to put that in. And if you want to test out your L2 trigger, just hold that rod down. And if the rod is fully in, your button isn't going to come off when you're pressing down on it. Now you're going to put your wheel back in. And I usually like to make sure that it goes in with these three holes 
facing towards you like this for this piece you have that hole your rod is going to go right through it and to put this end inside of the wheel you're going to make sure that it's at the end of this third hole so it should look something like this those three holes are supposed to be showing when it's complete and now you're just going to put the cover back on You can put your three screws back in, flip it around and you're going to put the last screw here. Now you can connect your cable once it's gotten in a little bit there's actually these two edges that you can push down on that's what I'm going to do with the tweezers. there's one last piece that you need to put inside your trigger and you're gonna put it in exactly like this with the trigger facing towards you like that this end you're gonna put it inside this gap right here once you've done that you can just push the other side so that this goes in your hair trigger kit should be complete like that and this is how that piece looks when it's inside now to show you guys the difference of a stock trigger and a clicky hair trigger when you push down on your stock button you see how it fully goes down basically touching that black casing right here when you have your clicky hair trigger installed this is how far you have to push down see that i'm pushing it down right now so now let me show you at the same time. You barely have to press down on this one. And it's recommended that you turn off your haptic feedback when you have your clicky hair triggers installed. And that would show you for the L1 and R1 buttons at the same time. But unfortunately, I already installed the little part on the other R1 button. The L1 button ends up having a little clicky sound to it. And you also don't have to push all the way down for it to activate. So it gives you a quicker trigger response in game. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the same as this. They're both built the same way. So I'm actually just going to install the trigger kit on this one. And then I'll be back to assemble the whole controller. All right, I got both of my trigger kits installed. Now we're going to put the controller back together. To start out, make sure that you know which side is going to go where. So if you got your R1, R2, it's going to go on the right side. Then L1, L2 will go on your left side. I'm going to start with R2. I'm just going to put it on the right here and match up the holes right here to these holes. Because we're going to put the screws back inside of it. Once you got it through, you can actually just hold it, then just put your two screws back in. Once that's done, you can flip this whole casing over and make sure you're grabbing the motherboard as well. Once again, you're going to flip your motherboard over. There is a gap on your controller right here. This cable is going to go through it. You grab your whole casing, make sure that wire goes through. You're going to grab the two black screws that go on the right side and left side. You're going to put back your two silver screws on the left side and right side. I'm going to put this piece back in place. Now we can flip the motherboard over. There's this little cable. Just watch out for that one. And then move your left and right cables away. Before you set it down completely, that little wire, you can grab it. Now push the motherboard down. If this wire moved, you can just grab it from this end and pull it carefully so that you can place it back in place. You can connect all your four cables.
if your little black pad came off from this tiny cable here the way that you would place it there's a tiny little hole right there or dot you would just have to match it so that it shows it through this hole right here you would open it up this little square is going to end up being able to go in there just place it in then you can close it and you should be able to see that that little dot is showing through the hole of the pad to place your battery holder back on grab your little wire here put it to the side and then these ends can actually hold your rumble cables here so place it so that those wires end up being under the battery holder Now you can place that wire back on. This is what it should look like. You can put the screw from the battery holder back on. And to connect your battery, you have three holes and three pins right here. You just gotta match them up and then connect it together. now you have a tiny piece right here that can help you keep your cables in there to put the back shell back on you're gonna start by putting it over your triggers make sure that this is pushed down then you can push on either end you can start to you can start to push on the grips you're going to hear a lot of clicks and that's good then check around to make sure there's no wire sticking out or that everything's closed. You can push down these locks. To put your L1 and R1 buttons back in, this part right here is going to go inside that gap right there. Test them out to make sure it feels normal. To put your trim back in, these two ends are going to go right in there. Make sure you get it over your thumbsticks and they're going inside the gaps. When you get to this point, you just gotta push down, slide your fingers on both ends, and then you can push down all around the middle. and the PS5 controller is fully assembled. Let me explain the benefits of having the clicky hair trigger installed. As I mentioned earlier, it helps with quicker trigger response because you don't have to push this down all the way. And since you installed the little parts under the buttons, it'll be activated quicker. And that's for all four triggers. L1, R1 has a nice clicky sound to it. L2 and R2 just feel smooth with no click. With the trigger kit, this is as far as you need to push down. Same as L1 and R1. Nice little tap. This kit is definitely good for shooters. I know a lot of people like to play Call of Duty, so yeah, this would be a nice upgrade. I mainly like to play Apex Legends. This definitely helps me out, especially with back buttons installed, even though you don't see it on this controller. This controller does have the back buttons installed with hair triggers and also LED kit. I am going to show the LED kit installation, but I just need some more time. The only con for the clicky hair trigger kit that I can think of is the fact that you should turn off your haptic feedback. I personally still haven't tried haptic feedback with the clicky hair triggers. That's it for this installation video. I hope I was able to help some of you guys out and hopefully you enjoyed it. Before I finish, I just want to say thank you guys for the 1k subs. Thank you for the continuous support and I'll be back with another one.